Happening this morning, more than 2,000 people in the Duke City are now waking up without power. And it is all thanks to extreme winds that blew through Albuquerque last night. Here's a live look at PNM.com where the outages are right now. And as you can see, they're pretty much all over the city, uh, but most of them are in the heights. And here is a live picture off of Tramway between Comanche and Montgomery this morning. PNM tells us that winds snapped or damaged 11 high voltage transmission poles here last night. This area, tramway between Comanche and Montgomery, is still closed this morning. PNM has been working through the night to get the power back on. It is already uh, restored power to 8,000 homes and businesses and is working on the other 2,000 right now. Meteorologist Kristen Van Dyke tells us that the wind gusts were up to 50 miles per hour that blew through town. It happened oh, around 7 o'clock last night. On one man we talked with couldn't believe what he saw. And I walked out here to the edge and realized, well, I've got a tree that I didn't start out with with today. Branches are in the ground. My telephone line is hanging down. Yeah, it was, uh, it was a mess out there, folks. It even knocked out power to the MDC, but it didn't cause any major problems there. Be careful when you are driving this morning. Some intersections where the power is out now have stop signs. All right, 532. Now to the wildfires that are still burning here in New Mexico. Some amazing pictures. Look at that a tornado of fire there. We're going to start out west in the Gila. This is the silver fire you're seeing now. It has ripped through 2,200 acres. Yeah, dozens of people who are from Kingston are now out of their homes and the main highway through the Membrus Mountains. Sky News 13 pilot reporter Bob Martin has the images from Sky News 13. Boiling columns of smoke just west of Kingston are getting closer to the small community. At the base of the most threatening column, an inferno. Intense walls of fire racing through thick, dry forest. Flames sometimes a couple of hundred feet tall. Flame tornadoes swirl through the fire ground. The terrain here is so rugged, firefighters on the ground have not been able to attack directly, except when embers briefly blew across Highway 152, that spot fire was quickly put out. Monday afternoon, smoke got so thick in the steep canyons around Kingston, air tankers and others could not get in safely to drop retardant and water. In the streets of the now evacuated town, dozens of firefighters from federal, state and local agencies stand at the ready. Portable water tanks are deployed and full. Crews on tankers, fire engines, and brush trucks are ready. Utility crews are standing by to repair power lines. In Sky News 13, Bob Martin, Kingston. Now up north, there's a new fire burning in the Pecos. It is growing quickly. The Jarosa fire, you can see the smoke here from a viewer picture, has burned about 1,300 acres in a very remote area of the Santa Fe National Forest. Lightning started this fire yesterday afternoon. The firefighters are mostly attacking it from the air. Some on the ground, about 13 or so, have actually had to leave the area because it was so unsafe. Now, there are a number of other big fires burning in New Mexico. You can find the latest on them anytime at our website, krqe.com. All the information is right here on your home page. Just look under wildfires. All right, meteorologist Kristen Madike joining us now. You're keeping a close eye on the weather conditions. I guess the big question is what it's going to do with these fires that are burning right now. Pretty much out of control. At least Yikes. Some of them. It's scary today. The winds are going to pick up quite a bit today. And then because of all the dry air that moved in yesterday, you're going to have that plus the heat. So it's going to be really, really tough today on the firefighters and and you know the uh, fires could spread pretty dangerously quickly uh, for this afternoon too because of the winds picking up. Humidity right now at 19% in Albuquerque, 31% uh, up in Santa Fe. We're anywhere from 13% uh, in Los Alamos, so we're only uh, looking at 20, 25% maybe humidity up in the mountains. It's going to drop significantly to single digits as we go into the afternoon, and winds are going to pick up. Right now, winds aren't bad, but going into the afternoon, we're going to have westerly winds all across west-southwest winds. Uh, so that means they're coming from the west and southwest across the northern mountains. Sustained at times between 20 and 30 miles an hour, and we can see gusts between 35 and 40 miles an hour. Uh, red flag warnings have been issued because of it, and even down to the heel, it may not be quite as strong as that, but we're going to have consistently uh, breezy to windy conditions there where we could even see gusts uh, over in the Gila where that other fire is, uh, gusting near 35 miles an hour, and those winds will be out of the west as well. So windy, very dry, and very hot. It's going to be a really tough day today. The winds do back off a bit tomorrow, so there is a little bit of, of an upside there. All right, and make sure you keep it right here on KRQE. KRQE for the very latest on the fires and fire restrictions. You can get the details along with the very latest anytime online.
The murder trial of a former APD cop is getting ready to start up this morning. Now, everyone agrees Tara Chavez was shot and killed six years ago. The question, though, did she kill herself or did her husband Levi kill her and make it look like a suicide? News 13's Alex Goldsmith has more. This trial has been years in the making since Tara Chavez died of a single gunshot wound in October 2007. So was it a suicide or did her husband, APD cop Levi Chavez, kill her? Both sides laid out their case. Tara's diary shows somebody whose self-worth was entirely tied up in her marriage to Levi, who uh, was very sad and very depressed over the state of her marriage. The defendant had the motive and the opportunity and killed his wife to remove a problem. The prosecution argues that problem was keeping Tara from turning him in for insurance fraud on his truck, which Levi had reported stolen. The state also claims Tara Chavez's position in bed and the condition of the gun makes suicide unlikely. But the defense argued the Chavez's broken marriage and apparent suicide note and other evidence at the scene make it clear Tara Chavez took her own life. Monday, the jury heard the 911 call Levi made to report Tara Chavez's death and saw crime scene photos. Okay, but the really interesting day could come Wednesday. That's when lead Valencia County Sheriff's Detective Aaron Jones is scheduled to testify. The defense has already attacked his credibility, calling him a dirty, dishonest cop. Alex Goldsmith, KRQE News 13. A trial could take four to six weeks. Levi Chavez has not said if he's going to take the stand in his own defense. So make sure you stay with KRQE News 13 for complete coverage of this trial. You can find updates anytime online under links at krqe.com. Plus, a reporter is going to be tweeting and blogging from the courtroom all throughout the trial. Elizabeth. Albuquerque police are searching for the man wanted in a triple shooting from over the weekend. An arrest warrant has been issued for William Clark in the shooting that happened near an Albuquerque Olive Garden. They say Clark shot three people in the leg in the parking lot of the restaurant off of San Mateo and Academy Friday night after a drug deal gone bad. Now Clark is facing aggravated battery and assault charges. Police are still on the hunt for a man. They say open fire at a church in Albuquerque and shot someone. Police say William Chavez, who may also go by Billy, got into an argument with Fernando Garcia inside the New Beginnings Church near Montgomery and Carlisle during a funeral yesterday. They took it outside. It's where police say Chavez shot Garcia in the shoulder. He was rushed to the hospital, but should be okay. Chavez took off in an older black Chevy Impala. Police say the two definitely know each other, but we are getting conflicting stories about exactly how.